Wonderful. We will begin today uh, following the first round matchup uh, with Creighton. For our media in attendance, please remember to raise your hand, state your affiliation, and a mic will be brought to you. For those participants joining via Zoom, please use the raise your hand functionality if you have a question, and um, we will call on you shortly. We will begin with an opening statement from Coach Jim Flannery before moving to questions for our student athletes, Lauren, Lauren Jensen, excuse me, and Emma Ronsick. Coach. Thanks. Um, yeah, congrats and, and, and credit to Mississippi State. They came out uh, and really executed, made shots early, and we played from behind the whole game. I thought we had our – kind of had our footing at, at halftime, down 10. Felt like we were in a, in a decent position, but we just couldn't get anything to go. I think we were three for 26 the first uh, – uh, at some point in the second half, and, uh, you know, just didn't, didn't make enough open shots until late. But uh, – uh, they were the better team. I'm I'm proud of our team. I know, uh, you know, I don't I don't not to discredit them, but this wasn't the best of of what we have shown this year. But uh, you know, that's that's the beauty of the tournament. Last year, uh, we had a magical run, and and but nothing's guaranteed, nothing's given, and uh, you know, it just just wasn't our day. But a lot of a lot or most of that had to do with how well Mississippi State played. We'll begin with questions for our student athletes, Lauren Jensen and Emma Ronsick. Steve Craw, um, I'm with the World Herald today. Um, Lauren, uh, you matched their intensity, just wasn't getting those shots to drop in the second half. Um, yeah, you know, like Flan said, um, when you shoot, what, three for 26 or something like that, you know, it's kind of hard to win a game. Um, we were getting the shots we wanted, uh, and they just weren't falling, and, you know, that happens sometimes. There's obviously things we could have done better outside of making shots, which we always can control. Um, and we started to get some momentum late, but um, it was a little too late at that point. Emma, you're one of the th three girls that started all the games this year, so you didn't panic. You'd, you'd seen everything, right? Yeah, I mean, I've cut, we all of us, um, including me, have been prepared for moments like these. I mean, last year, obviously, we had that Elite Eight run, but I feel like that doesn't take away from the preparation that we had coming into the game. Ball just didn't fall our way this game, and a lot of credit to Mississippi State, like Flan said, but sometimes the ball just doesn't go your way, and that's life, that's basketball. Thank you. Uh, Ellie French from KETV in Omaha. Uh, this could be for either of you guys. When it came to game prep, did you prep for MSU to shoot the three kind of as well as they did today? I mean, I know they were really good, but was that kind of pivotal in the preparation? Or? Um, yeah, we um, – didn't really expect them to come out and shoot it like that. I mean, props to them, though. Um, obviously, they they had a little bit of height on us in the post, um, so I bet they expected that we were going to try to cater most of our game plan to that, and um, they like to get downhill, and so we prepped a lot for that, and they came out ready to shoot. Um, I, I don't know. I think they might have made more threes in the first quarter than they did against Illinois, um, if that – puts it into perspective but um you know like Emma said that's basketball um they had a good game plan they executed and they played well any other questions for our student athletes um Abby Gallant with the Craytonian um how did you guys keep your energy up even when you were down so early yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just one of those um, games when you're in the tournament, you're playing for something bigger than just winning a game of basketball. You're playing for your seniors. You're playing to keep the game that you love alive in the tournament. So, I mean, I feel like just putting that into perspective just makes you want to keep um, going regardless of the score, regardless of the outcome of the game, because you want to keep going for your seniors and you hate, hate to see what the locker room holds after a loss in the tournament, so... This is for either one of you. How do you try to find offense when the threes weren't falling very early? Um, yeah, so I guess um, 
A lot of times when our offense isn't really doing that great, we try to find a spark on defense. Um, and I feel like we were able to string together some stops, um, but not super consistently. You know, when we've been down some games um, and our offense hasn't really been flowing, we've been able to lock in on the defensive end, get stops, and kind of let that fuel our offense. Um, and that wasn't really the case tonight. Um, like I said earlier, I feel like we were getting good looks and the looks that we wanted. Um, but um, they weren't falling. I feel like we could have tried to get a little bit more shots in the paint, um, a little bit less threes. But, yeah. Did you guys feel like maybe at times, I guess in the first half, that MSU was maybe kind of speeding up your game offensively, maybe a little bit more than you wanted to, or kind of dictating just the pace of play? Yeah, I mean, that just comes with playing the teams that we do, um, especially in non-con and in tournament. A lot of teams that we are going to play outside of the Big East and even in the Big East are going to be taller, bigger, a little more athletic. But we heavily rely on our fundamentals and just our IQ of the uh, game of basketball. And like I said earlier, it's just sometimes the ball just does not go in for you. And just and nothing really felt like it was in our favor tonight. But they played really well. So, uh, yeah. You mentioned uh, Corey Jobman, Cretonian. You mentioned playing for your seniors. Can you talk about what Rachel has meant to this team, especially defensively? Um, you know, she's been huge this whole season. Um, I honestly think um, in the beginning of January, end of December, we weren't really playing our best. And, um, you know, the whole team picked it up. But a huge part of that was Rachel, in my opinion. Um, the second half of the season, I mean, she's always been great defensively, but she's been playing awesome offensively as well. Um, she was playing the best basketball I've ever seen her play, and um, she's a huge part of our team on the basketball court and what she brings on offense, on defense. You know, she does what we need her to do, and she's also a leader. Um, everyone looks to her for that. and. You know, Carly has been huge as well this year. Um, kind of the same thing. She can come in and do um, anything we need her to do. You know, it wasn't easy, the role that she had to play this year compared to last. And not many people would come in and handle that the way that she did um, and embrace it. And we wouldn't have been the team that we were without Carly doing that. Any other questions for our student athletes? I know it's tough in this moment, obviously, in the season, you know, with the loss. But when you kind of look at next season and just the future, it's, I guess, kind of similar to last season where a lot of talent returning and you guys and just, you know, your younger players. So what do you just feel kind of optimistic about as far as just the future and kind of building off what this program's done in the last two seasons? Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I love playing with the team that we have already. I'm definitely going to miss Carly and Rachel, but we do have a lot to look forward to next year with the girls that we're bringing in, with the development of the freshmen and our big junior class and Lexi Andrew coming back. So I don't know. I'm really excited and mainly really excited for Lexi to get back in the court with us. Wonderful. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Emma. Good job. Thank you. Questions for Coach Flannery? Hey, Coach Flynn. Um, did you feel like part of maybe MSU's kind of hot start was just it taking a little while for the team, for you guys to get settled in maybe a little bit? or? Yeah, well, yes and no. I thought they 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 were shot ready and – you know, if if we could re-implement our game plan, we probably would have been a little bit tighter than we were. But, you know, as Lauren pointed out, their starting group had zero threes the other night against Illinois, and I know that's kind of an aberration, but we felt like that we had to stay in front of the ball and we were probably willing to live with a lot of the threes that they took, Not certainly not all of them. We gave up some threes that we didn't want to give up uh, to, to – you know, particularly Jordan, I felt like we gave her and the second one early to Poe. So we gave up some threes that we didn't. I just didn't think we were urgent enough or we weren't, you know, attentive enough to those. But, uh, uh, you know, credit to them. They came out and, and made them. 
Um, and, and that makes a huge difference, right? If, if those shots don't go in early, it's, you know, their body language maybe is different. Our body language is different when you're playing from, you know, eight to 10 points down immediately. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I, for sure, I think we, if we had it to do over again, we would have maybe been a little bit different in terms of, of how we defended the three, but we, they also can score in the post and off the dribble. So you're typically we have to give up one because of our quickness and our, and our height. So we, we chose wrong today. Uh, this isn't the first time you've given up a lot of threes early. Mine goes back to the Nova game. Is this something that you're going to uh, look at as an emphasis going forward with the program? Uh, yes and no. I think I, I think when you play a team, you know, we've played the last 22 games have been conference opponents, and so you have a, you know, you have a greater beat on beat on what what they do, what their strengths are, and then you get to a tournament, and this is an excuse, but we didn't know who we were going to play until, you know, two nights ago. So, you know, when you put together a game plan, you have, you just have a little bit less knowledge because you haven't, you haven't played them. And so we can go back and, you know, they played Nebraska, who we played. They played South Dakota State, who we played early in the year, but they're a different team. I mean, they've got a lot, they've got a new a first year coach. And they've got several first-year players, and Carter didn't play for them last year, so they, they're a they're a better team than they were, you know, given some of those early games. So now we're watching them against SEC opponents, um, mostly. And uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I, our our three-point defense was what 19th in the country coming into the game, so it's not. I, I don't think it. I actually think we defended the three really well over the course of the year. I mean, you can pick a game or two, but today it was more a game plan than lack of execution of, of what we were trying to do. I think you guys had a 10-3 run before heading into the locker room. Um, what did you kind of notice from the team before that, and what was kind of your message to them at the break, just kind of closing the gap a little bit? Yeah, I, I mean, I said to the to our staff as we were walking in the locker room, I said I felt, I said I felt like we needed to play better, but I said said I felt pretty good being down ten because of the way, the the start that they had and how many threes they had made and, and how many open threes we had missed. So I felt like at some point the tables would turn in terms of just being able to make open threes. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just didn't get off to the start that we needed to in that third quarter. I mean, if you if that game hovers at 10 instead of getting to 15 or 16, um, you know, it affects both teams, right? It's you, if, you're, if you're the team that's played from behind and you look up and you're still 15, 16 down, that plays in your mind, and if you're 15 or 16 up instead of eight or 10 up, that plays um, differently in in the head of the in the heads of the team that's that's winning. So, um, yeah, I felt good at halftime, and and uh, unfortunately, we just uh, <laughs> we just didn't shoot the ball well. I don't I don't know what to what to say. I felt like we, for the most part, we had we had good shots, and. Um, you know, I, th I, I do think they did a really good job mixing defenses. They played, you know, they, they, they mixed man and zone, and I thought they kept us a little bit off balance that way. So you just, I think the predictability of where the shot's going to come from is different when a team uh, changes defenses as, as well as they did. But I also felt like we, we had open shots. And I, in the second half, we did an offensive rebound the way we did the first half. We got some... We we did a good job on the offensive glass in the first half, not so much in the second half. I felt like we 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 weren't as active there, and I thought that was that played into it too because of how poorly we shot. We <laughs> when you shoot it that poorly, you need extra shots, and we didn't get as many in the second half. Hey, Coach Stefan Kreischik with the Clarion Ledger. You had mentioned you know Jessica Carter and, and what she can do in the post, but she had a couple mid range shots today at, at three assists, which was one off her season high. I guess was there any part of her game? I guess with, with the versatility that maybe surprised you or impressed you a bit today? Yeah, she was like you said. I thought her mid range was was solid. Her footwork in the mid post is good, and and uh, um, you know, and defensively she 
she did what they needed her to do. We thought she was somebody we could pick on um, on our offensive end because she's a paint protect. You know, she's a paint protector, and we don't have. You know, Emma can score in the Emma and Morgan can score in the post, but they can also make threes. So we felt like we were different enough and versatile enough. And I thought she, you know, she competed defensively um, in a way that that certainly helped their team win. Because if, um, but yeah, I thought her I thought her mid post footwork was good, and 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 uh, like you said, she had some she had some good passes. Any final question for coach? Uh, in the first half, you uh, out rebounded on the offensive glass, six to two. How did you feel about, especially being the smaller team, uh, your team's uh, effort on the glass, especially in the first half? Yeah, it was there in the first half. It wasn't there as much as it needed to be in the second half, based on how poorly we shot at the first. You know, you know, if we if we'd have done a little better job the first ten to twelve minutes of the second half, and maybe kept the game in play a little bit, then it's you know. When we when we started making threes, it's a little bit different. But yeah, I thought we did. You know, we had some really good possessions in the first half. I just thought we, and, and that's typical. Like when you struggle to shoot it for as long as we did, I felt like we 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 kind of gave up on offensive rebounding in the second half, and that and that hurt us based on how poorly we shot it. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming.